packed by special demand, the B550 Pro. So last time when I did this video, I didn't really go into depth because I didn't know too much about this board. But being that I've torn this computer apart a few times, and now I just literally, look, tore it down completely so that I can rebuild it for you guys because you guys requested it. So this is the Master Cooler TD500 and this is the B550 uh, Pro. And what I'm gonna do here is go over everything in depth uh, so you'll know exactly what each piece is and then I'm gonna hook it up. So as you see here, it's a, it's a resin um, motherboard so i already have that installed but i'm definitely going to take that out here in a second and show you guys i already cleaned it took the thermal paste off and everything so this is going to be your pcie slot your uh that you can put you can put in both of these you can put um graphic cards i use this main one here and i haven't used this one yet i'm probably not going to use it then you have other pcie slots you have your um HD audio slot here, you have a Thunderbolt slot, and you also have a, what is this? Uh, that's Thunder, I don't know exactly what slot that is, let me see. I didn't use that slot anyway, and I'm not using Thunderbolt anyway. This is for your addressable headers, RGB headers, so say you wanna put some, some lights, say you wanna put some strips in your case, that's what you wanna do. This is your uh, addressable, um, three pin header. So that's going to be for your fans. If you have a, um, a case fans or anything else, this is the one that I'm going to hook my front case fans up to. I'm going to run it up through the bottom and you'll see, uh, here's your, um, CLRTC. Here's your sensor. Here's your, uh, fans. So this is now mind you, this is your power to your fans. This is your RGB to your fans. So whatever fans you hook up to this, this is what you're gonna use. Uh, I run my case fans, but I also have a splitter here that's going to be running other fans too. So I have my case fans hooked up here. This is gonna be a USB 2.0. These are USB 2.0s here. And another case fan area. And then this is gonna be your control panel area. Here is the M.2 slot. Uh, it has a, a cover on it. Let me show you here. It, this cover, I took it off here. It has a piece of plastic here that you take it and that's gonna be your thermal pad. Also, if it comes with this rubber piece, there's one rubber piece that's already here. I don't know if you can see it. Let me do that here. If you can see, let me zoom out. Let me actually zoom in and see. As you can see, it's two different pieces. The bottom piece, let me see if I can point it. Hold on, give me a second. This bottom piece here was already here, but they advise you in, in the in the catalog, uh, in the manual, to put a, that other piece here on there if you have a single-sided M.2 drive, which I do. Here is my Crucial P5. Oh, this is my Crucial, I mean my um, SanDisk Gen 3 M.2, and it's, it's, it's one-sided. So that side is definitely gonna, the way you put it in, I'm gonna show you that too. And one thing you also have to know is too, is when you open up this motherboard, it comes with, where's that peg at? It comes with a peg, this little silver peg here. Don't mind my nails, I was biting my nails the other day. And you can put it in between wherever you need to put it for it to fit for your M.2. So you put your M.2 in here, and then you put your peg here on the end. Well, since mine is a 20, 22, 80, I'm gonna put it here, right? And then that's gonna seal my SD card here and seal it there as well too. So that's where we're gonna do that there. So that's your Gen 3. One thing that I can help y'all out with this too, with this tough board is, <clears throat> is that you have six SATA uh, inserts, right? So SATA lane six, number six, here's one, two, three, four, five. SATA lane six, will not work if you're using this M2 slot. If you're not using it, you have all six slots available. However, I found this out the hard way and I was thinking that I broke something or didn't hook it up, but then I, I searched and searched online, excuse me, and I found out that this M.2 M shares the same lane with six. 
So if you hook up six, if you hook up M.2 here, six is automatically deactivated. The other five still work just fine, but number six, that's one thing. I, that's one thing that I found out and I want to give y'all some stress-free installation. If you use the Gen 3 M.2 slot, SATA 6.6. Six. SATA slot six is not going to work. I had a uh, um, uh, SSD hooked up to this and I was for the love of me not figuring out why it wouldn't work. The other one worked. I even switched it, rearranged my case, did that. Still didn't work. So then I said, well, let me Google it and let me find out. Found out that if you hook up the M.2 Gen 3 over here, six, uh, SATA slot 6 is not going to work. Now what you have here too is, here's your Gen 4 that's being powered by the CPU. This is your Gen 4 M M.2 slot. And this one is single sided and it comes with another piece. I mean, the one I got on here too is a P5 uh, Crucial, one terabyte, Gen 4. It, it has a single slot too. So now if you don't, if your card is a double sided M.2 and the way you can tell if it's double sided is if it has chips on this side and on this side. Well, mine only has chips on one side on both of them. Uh, so if it has chips on both sides, then you won't have to worry about it. But if it only has chips on one side, then you want to they give you these little square pieces and you want to, you know, pull the the, 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 the the film off and put it on there too. And this also comes with a case with a thermal pad that has a little clear piece on it. So you want to take that off. So just wanted to give you that and we haven't even got to the good stuff. This is USB-C 3.2. This is your front panel connector to your motherboard. Not the not the not the power cords and the reset and stuff, but your your panel connector and power. This is going to be your main, you know, your main motherboard power here. Now, you have four slots. And the way this board works out is is if you see I got them unclicked here. You have this slot and this slot. You can't put your memory here and here. It's not going to work correctly. You have to do it the mother. Now you want to go to your manual and take a look. As you see here, you have to stagger it on this board. Again, this is the B550 Pro. Um, you have to stagger it. So when I put my memory in, I'm going to put memory here and I'm going to put memory here. Otherwise, if you put them here together, you're going to have your memory. So for instance, mine's is 32. So it's two 16s. You're going to have 16, you're going to have 32, but it's going to be running in single channel instead of dual. So it's going to look like you have just 32 gigs. It's going to act, act like it's one RAM stick. So you want to make sure, read your manual in order for it to operate correctly. You want to make sure that you stagger it. Now, that's just the normal basis for building a computer, uh, but definitely you want to make sure that you stagger it. And that's what I did, you know, or skip it or whatever. One here, one here. And that's what this manual tells you. It tells you that you want to put a stick here and a stick here if you only have two. Now, if you have all four, you don't have to worry about it. Because once you put all four in, it's going to realize that you have four sticks in and it's going to operate the way it's supposed to. But if you only have two sticks, you have to go opposite. Okay? Just wanted to make sure you knew that. This is another addressable header here. Another addressable header. So if you want to do LED strips coming out the top, this is your CPU op. And this is your CPU. Let me make sure. Hold on. Yep. This is your CPU fan. And this is your CPU op. So what you want to do is if you have an AIO, don't hook it up to your CPU op, right? There's a place on the board here, and I'm going to get over there in a second and show you. It's like right there. What you want to do, you want to leave this CPU op unoccupied you want it i mean you can leave it there i mean you could put it there if you want to but they have a special built aio pump header over there so leave this unoccupied and the fans that are connected to your radiator on your aio pump which i'm going to go get real quick and show you those fans that are connected you want to connect them here connect the fans here don't connect your aio pump here don't connect your aio pump here either connect your radiator fans here so that they spin based off on the heat of this so that they can, you know, get that going. Now over here, you have a, a fan header three or fan header one. That's fan header one. Here's fan header two. And here's fan header three. So just remember that you got 
fan header one or two, fan header three, and fan header one. My fan header one is the is my exhaust fan that I use on the back of the case. What I do is I run, I have the fan hooked up over here, and I run this cord underneath this this uh, heat sink and plug it in here. And this right here is your AIO pump header. Right here, your AIO pump header. And what again, when I hook up my AIO, I run my AIO fans here, and then I run that AIO um, pump header back through the back of the case, come back over the top through here, through this piece here, and connect it here. But I have an extension cord, uh, uh, an extension cable for my fan here. Let me grab it that I use to make sure that it's comfortable enough to get in there. So that runs across and then this runs through here and I plug this piece into the board and that's how my AIO, AIO fan works. So let me get that for you real quick and show you. So I did that. Uh, and then here's your power. Now, if you get a, if you get a, this is eight plus four. Let me see, let me zoom in here. If you get a power supply that only has eight pin, you'll be perfectly fine. You don't need this additional four, excuse me. You don't need this additional four here. That's for if you're gonna be doing like liquid cooling, overclocking and stuff like that too. However, because it's there, I hook it up. So you only need this to power your CPU. This is gonna be your CPU power. You only need this really. However, I hook this up here too. Sorry, I just do it because I already have eight coming out of my CPU and I have another eight, but because I used um, extensions, which I probably necessarily don't need to use an extension for this because uh, nobody can see it because it's hid away at the top of the top of the um, top of the case and it will give me a little bit more room. So I think I might reconsider doing the extensions here. But anyways, so you, I have it and it's easier to split it too, but at the same time though, you wanna, you only need this one here. You don't need this one, but I hook it up just in case, cause you never know. Might as well hook it up, it's there. I have the cords, might as well hook it up. So now let's go to the back here. Let's go to the back here. Sorry, I wanted to give y'all an in-depth. Last time the video I did, it was, I was a noob. I, I've built computers before, but it's been years. Let's say probably a decade. So let's look at this here. So. This is your BIOS flash button, right? These are your USB 2.0s, correct? One, two, three, four, USB 2.0s. Then you have a USB 3.2 and a USB 3.2 USB-C. So this is USB A 3.2, this is USB C 3.2. And if you look at it, you can see it right there. Let me stop shaking. It's a Gen 2. Hold on. 3.2 Gen 2. Now, here you have your Ethernet cable. And then you have two USB 3.1s. Right? Now, if you're going to be using a... Uh, for instance, this is a 5600X. If you're going to be using a 5600G or... You know another graphics another uh, CPU card that has the graphics on it then this is when this comes into play your display port and your HDMI you'll be using the onboard graphic output here but your your GPU I mean your CPU will be your GPU so you won't be occupying anything over here you'll only be occupying your CPU and using the, this onboard outputs but I didn't get a G because I already have a 1660 super so that's one thing that I just wanted to go over too. Then you have your standard, you have your standard outputs. Mic, headset, optical out, and all that jazz. So I really wanted to give y'all a more in depth because when I looked at the video, I was like, Brian, now you know, you was, I, would, I guess I was in such a rush that I wanted to build my computer that I was super happy and I really didn't care about the video. So that's what happened. So let me move this real quick here and give you guys a shot at the back so we can tell you what's on this board and we can get this video over because we're hitting the 14, almost 15 minute mark. So what's on this board here? Let's zoom in. Back panels, two Gen 2 
3.2 Gen 2 ports, an A and a C. We went over that. Uh, two times 3.0. Oh, so it's not 3.1. I'm sorry. Those other blue ones are 3.2 Gen 1s. So you got your Gen 2s that are your, your lighter color, uh, like teal color. And you got one that's a USB-C and one that's a USB-A. Then you have your Gen 2 your 3.2 Gen 1 ports, this the, the darker blue. Then you have four USB-A ports that are 2.0. Uh, you have the display port, the HDMI port, the Realtek Ethernet port, 2.5 gigabytes, which you'll have to download um, some software. When you when you uh, turn this, you know, when you go through the packet and stuff, it gives you software. You have uh, the five audio jacks, one optical jack, and then the BIOS flash button. Now I'm gonna show you the panel that comes with it so you can see what the BIOS flash button is, but I have to go to the back of my computer because I installed it. Then you have, uh, uh, it talks about the ethernet, which I don't know why they listed it twice. Here's your audio features. It has the 7.1 channel H, de H high definition audio coded. It has the jack detection. Supports 24-bit, 192 kilohertz playback. Uh, exclusive DTS custom for gaming headsets. I don't really use that because I use a USB Bluetooth. Audio shielding, rear optic outport, premium Japanese audio capacitors, dedicated audio PCB layers, audio cover, and unique DPOP circuit. Alliance, boom. It has the AI noise canceling microphone as well too, you have to download that software. It tells you about the turbo LAN and it tells you about the dual M2 heat sinks, which we showed earlier. Now you have your expansion slots. You have one uh, PCIe 4.0 16 slots. That's the main one for your graphics card. You have one 3.0 16 uh, supports four by four mode PCIe. And then you have three PCIe one slots, right? Then your storage M1 M2, M.2 one slot which is gonna be your 4.0. Then you have your M.2 PCI 3.0, which is gonna be your 3.0. And remember, it disables SATA 6. And I didn't see this here, but it says it there. M.2 underscore two, which is your 3.0, shares bandwidth with SATA G, SATA 6G. When M.2 is populated, SATA 6G 56 will be disabled. I did not see that to just now. <laughs> After I searched so long on the internet, what a crazy world. Then it talks about graphics and then it talks about the memory that it supports as well as your chipset, which is B550 chipset and that it is an AM4 socket and it's uh, for the 5000, 3, uh, 4000 G series and the 3000 series desktop processors. So that's the tough B550 Pro motherboard. Wanted to get a more in-depth thing for you guys so you can know. I'll be putting this video up soon, but I'm also going to be rebuilding my computer and you guys can see that video next. Hey guys, Until then. I got a phone call and it cut my video off. Let me get my flashlight so you can see this. So here's your back panel that you put inside of your computer. You see that USB-C, that USB slot two right here is for the BIOS flash, and then there's your BIOS flash button. So let me show you where it is relatively on the motherboard. So on the motherboard, it's this slot right here, this one. So you, if you're gonna flash your BIOS before you uh, hook up your motherboard, you want to put your USB, your USB drive here in slot number two, where it shows on the case, BIOS, slot number two. You wanna hook that up, you wanna plug in your power, so you're gonna plug in your power. You don't necessarily have to put your CPU in. You're not gonna to wanna to put your CPU in. You wanna make sure that that slot is empty, but you wanna plug in your power here and your motherboard power here. Plug in your USB drive. Once you see that it comes on, you'll be able to know that the board is coming on because this will illuminate with LED lights. And then what you do is you push a flash button here. It's gonna be greenish, whatever, or red, whatever, and it's gonna flash, let it sit for two or three minutes, it'll be good to go. Then you can unplug everything, turn it off, turn your power supply off, unplug everything, and then build your computer and everything else. Just wanted to let you guys know that. Sorry I meant to say that, but I got interrupted with a phone call. But that's it, until next time.